The Green Crow Inn, a novel by Derek A. Camon, read by Kelman Friedman. Chapter 16. The Upshot. The clamor around Kalka's little skirmish showed no signs of dying down any time soon. The inn was packed that night, and as I served tables and tended the hearth, it sounded as though every conversation was a fresh take on what had happened. The innkeeper's slash soon became a battle, and Catchpole and Hobbler, two seemingly incompetent vagrants, were altered into a fierce company of brigands. Kalka herself was not available to amend any of these alterations. After seeing to prep for the evening special, she retreated to her office to count coins or plot my own personal misery, or whatever it was that she did in there. Furrier kept to himself as well. If he'd thanked Kalka for his rescue, I had not been there to witness it, nor did he tell me any more about what had happened, or why he had been attacked. He finished his evening duties by lugging a few kegs up from the cellar and hammering a new slat onto the stable wall, and, not unlike the innkeeper, disappeared into his quarters. This was well, for the sharing of responsibilities between myself and Gilrad was immediately cumbersome. It was a relief to be needed in the common area. Prior to dinner service, I entered the stable to offer the animals their evening repast, but Gilrad was already there doing the same. What? You don't like oats? he patiently asked a white draft horse named Flora. She was dressed warmly in a padded blue blanket. She likes the oats to be soaked a bit, I said. He turned and nodded at me. Thanks. So how do you want to, um, do this? I asked. Gilrad splashed some water into the horse's feed bag and said, Well, I've noticed that you fill in a lot during mealtimes at the Crow. Perhaps you should stick with that? I don't mind remaining the stable boy indefinitely. He smiled honestly, and I wondered if, under other circumstances, we might not be friends. I patted Flora fondly on her neck and nodded, muttering, I suppose that could work. But if you need any pointers or help, you know I'm available. Gilrad opened his mouth and watched his cloudy breath drift away. I don't think that will be necessary. Still, I may check in. Very good. I nodded again. Gilrad seemed to ignore me and went about his business tending to the horses. I returned to the inn, and, on the short, cold walk between the stable and rear porch, considered a fresh round of sulking. The full mob, guzzling ale and sharing tall tales, meant the last call at the Green Crow Inn had not yet happened. It was late, near to midnight. After a cavernous yawn, Sumi Kind rubbed her eyes and said, I am getting Kalka. These people will not be leaving until they see the hero of the day. She disappeared before I could comment. Quite a day, cried Nayurgi. The old barfly was still present and accounted for, and on his sixth round of ternary mead. Okay, I said. Looking forward to trying your lager. Juniper, did you say? I didn't. You know, you'd get more tips if you weren't so dreary to talk to. The dwarf sent a serious look my way, then slipped out of his stool and joined another table. A pair of younger dwarves stepped forward to the bar after him, asking for a bar of red speckle wine. I sighed and prayed it was at the bar and not down in the cellar. Quite a day, one of them repeated. Who knew Kalka had that in her? Certainly not me. Why, I'd say... Oh my, there she is! A small cheer went around the common room, and I was thankful for Kalka's late appearance, as it distracted my patrons and saved me a trip to the cellar for the bottle. The innkeeper, who stood in the kitchen doorway, raised her hand and forced herself to smile, but her slightly elevated shoulders belied some tension. She was obviously uncomfortable and tired. Thank you, she said, but she really meant, please just shut up, all of you. Thank you, she repeated. I have another piece of rough business to attend to today in saying, last call. There was grim mixture of disappointed sighs and polite laughter, then a rush on the bar. Luckily, Sumi had returned after locating Kalka. She and I worked in tandem, slinging mugs of ale and pouring glasses of wine and serving up the last cold plates of food from the kitchen. A short while later, the last of the crowd drained their mugs and readied to leave. Gilly and Luella were among them. I'd not noticed her all evening. Gilly winked at me, and putting her arm around Luella, called, Just a few weeks. My polite smile hid a feeling of rage. Another few weeks until the beer was finished, yes. But that meant another few weeks of fakery until my foolish New Year's party. 
Another couple weeks of awkward interactions with Kalka and Gilrad. Another couple weeks until I would be leaving the Green Crow. Furrier appeared to be doing nothing at all when I checked in on him. I don't know what made me do it. The ornery troll likely wanted to be left alone and would only berate my attempted at consolation. Nonetheless, I felt compelled to try. I knocked politely, but entered uninvited. Furrier's room was drab, even if it was essentially the same as my own. There was no decor, no mess, nothing apart from the furniture that the inn had provided. He sat in a stool, looking absurd with his bent knees raised almost to his shoulders, and stared at the wall. The cloth he'd used as a bandage was crumpled on the floor. Black bloodstains were evident. Leaning against the doorway, I spoke up. Want to talk about it? Furrier scratched at his face and made an uncomfortable sound. I sighed and started to leave. Called me a coward, they did, he said thickly. And my ruddy boss has to come and rescue me. Then he shifted in his seat, but did not turn to look my way. I was always runty back home in the bog. The others reminded me every chance they had. There's no shame in... No use in a fight, Furrier continued his monologue. Perhaps it was easier for him to speak if he imagined he was speaking to himself. And fighting's all those dingbats want, so I left. Those two louts as it me never even knowed me from the old days. They was just off on a lark and happened to hear about a troll working at this bloody inn. He sniffed tearfully and my chest suddenly felt heavy. I reckoned I was rid of them after they mouthed off and left me at the market. Guess I was wrong. Thanks for that, Gilrad. Thought they might make an example of deserters like me. Win some favor with the council or the like. Furrier laughed bitterly. Calco told them one better, I suppose. Not much to show for striking me apart from a ruddy scar on his chest. Stupid git. His knobby and unshod feet scuffed the floor. You may find, I said carefully, that we all run from time to time. Except Calca, eh? She runs straight out of thing. We dwelled on that last thought in silence. Then, again, without turning his head, Furrier reached his long arm backwards and shut the door in my face. Good night. I whispered. This has been The Green Crow Inn by Derek A. Kamal, read by Kalman Friedman, with music by Michael Elliott. To find out more, including how to purchase your copy of the novel, please visit shorelessskies.com.